Hello again. As promised, we did some quick benchmarks using the HP Z2 Tower G9 workstation, outfitted with the 13th generation Intel Core i9 13900K processor and the integrated HD Graphics 770 module for monitor support. To make it interesting, we installed an NVIDIA RTX A4000 GPU to see what kind of performance we could get. Spoiler alert, we didn't get any benchmarks off the HD Graphics 770 module because it wouldn't play any of the standard 3D Mark benchmarks. Such is life. Onward. We didn't do any elaborate tests on the processor or the GPU, just the standard Cinebench and 3D Mark applications. You know, TimeSpy, Port Royal, and Speedway. Like I said in the initial review of this system, which you can see here, it is not super powerful like the Z4, Z6, or ZHE5 workstations, but it still does provide some respectable performance. If you're just using the system for some word processing, a little database management, and perhaps some web-related research, then there really is no need to purchase a GPU. You can definitely get away with the, using the integrated HD Graphics 770 or 730 module, which is integrated with most of the 12th through 14th generation core i5, i7, and i9 CPUs. Supported on this system as long as it has a K suffix. Not the KF suffix, though, as those do not have integrated graphics, and in that case, you will need a GPU. The good part, if you do want a more powerful performance, you can add one or two GPUs to the system, up to and including the RTX 5000 ADA generation or the AMD Radeon Pro W7600 GPUs. I already went over that stuff in the full review, so check that out if you haven't already seen it. What we did do was add an NVIDIA RTX A4000 GPU for some decidedly increased performance out of this little beastie. The CPU is a Core i9-13900K, so yes, on the modern to performance gaming too you need a little work mixed with play. I mean, <laughs> who doesn't? That CPU did an admirable job running the breakfast nook living room scene. It racked up a very nice score of 34,511 points. Very nice for a single processor performance. Just for some perspective, the HP Z6 G5A supports a single AMD Ryzen Threadripper Pro 7000WX series CPU. We tested a 7559WX with 96 cores and it clocked in at 116,040 points basically 3.6 times as fast, but you will definitely pay for that increased performance. Nice to know it's there though. Like I said, HP does have other workstation options for performance, but this is a great system in its own right for those of you not editing a blockbuster movie or building the next headquarters for the FBI or something. I suppose you could still do that, just a bit slower. Next, we tested our NVIDIA RTX A4000 graphics card. To be fair, this system can support the latest RTX 5000 ADA generation, but we didn't have one of those, as this channel is probably not on NVIDIA's radar, so they really don't give us the cool stuff. I mean, we do sell a lot of NVIDIA GPUs, but that would be on the sales side, such is life. Here's a link in the upper corner if you want to browse IT Creation's selection of NVIDIA GPUs, or AMD GPUs for that matter. Blatant advertising aside, the NVIDIA RTX A4000 GPU is a single width card and features not the latest Ada Lovelace generation, but Ampere architecture. I mean, it is 2024 after all, and I only mention that because as we all know, technology never ages well. And who knows how many years this video will be active. Anyways, the stats. Let's start with the good stuff. Recommended gaming resolutions of 2K and even 2.5K. That said, it is also capable of resolutions of 4K, but not ideal for gaming. It uses a 6-pin power connector and has a PCI 4.0 by 16 interface. That PCI 5.0 by 16 slot we popped this little unit into will definitely have some spare bandwidth. It has four DisplayPort 1.4a, 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory, 17,400 million transistors, 6,144 shading units, 192 texture mapping units, 96 ROPES, which is the render output units, but the real acronym is Raster Operations Pipeline. All you really need to know is it helps render the image. And then there are 48 ray tracing acceleration cores and the typical operation frequency is 735 megahertz, which can boost to 1560 megahertz. TechPowerUp.com ranks this sucker right below the GeForce RTX 4060 Ti with eight gigabytes of GDDR6 memory and right above the AMD Radeon 6750 XT. Definitely some appreciable performance in there. This GPU did rack up some nice numbers too for a single width card considering it's two years older than the NVIDIA GeForce 4060 Ti, which is a double width card featuring Ada Lovelace architecture. That aspect does kind of surprise me a bit. Let's cut to the chase here. Final numbers for this professional grade card and just a recap on what those 3D Mark scenarios actually measure. 
All of these 3D Mark applications measure DirectX 12. DirectX 12 is the newest version of DirectX, at least in 2024. DirectX enhances game rendering with realistic lighting effects, plus shading and ray tracing, to name a few. TimeSpy measures the graphics card performance in a number of games and CPU simultaneously. Port Royale also measures DirectX 12, ray tracing too, but also real-time ray tracing with NVIDIA's Deep Learning Super Sampling, or DLSS. That uses an AI to improve game performance and image quality. Even Speedway measures DirectX 12. They all pretty much do the same thing, but look at a slightly different aspect in that there are some very reflective objects with complex lighting effects in Port Royale. So what did we learn today? And first off, I will qualify this as we are not actually measuring the performance of the HP Z2 Tower G9 workstation, just the CPU and GPU installed. That said, this system does support the good stuff, so you won't be disappointed. And yes, you can install a second GPU, but again, it will go in a PCI 3.0 slot with a x16 connector length, but only a x4 link width. I'm not entirely convinced you get full power from that one. The primary slot is a PCI 5.0 x16 with a x16 link width, and there is plenty of bandwidth and then some for that slot. You know, and now that I think about it, we should have placed a GPU in that other slot and tested. <laughs> oh wait, we did, but we only tested on time spy. Surprisingly, the numbers for both slots were pretty much the same, just slightly reduced performance from the PCI 3.0 slot at 10,732 points compared to 10,874 points, even though the generation and link bandwidth are much less. I mean, in theory, the PCI 5.0 slot has four times the bandwidth compared to the PCI 3.0 slot of the same link width. But that's not comparable either because we have only a quarter of the bandwidth with the by 4 link width on the PCI 3.0 slot compared to the by 16 link width on the PCI 5.0 slot. Perhaps the card is just not powerful enough to flood the PCI lanes. And I'll leave you with that mystery. If anybody has a theory, post it below. If you're looking for a workstation, check out itcreations.com. I placed a few links in the description below, and there's one right there. There's even a few links for the other HP Z series workstations. Until next time, I'm Doug Stuman with IT Creations. Thanks for watching.